Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. This place is going to be rotten. This is episode 150, recorded October 20th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. <laughs> Hello once again. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week, of course, is my co-host, Jeff Moore. How you doing, sir? Dummies, 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 dummies. Um, I'm doing great. I, I think my voice actually went too low there. Yeah, I, it worked for me. It worked for me. Yeah, um, great. Yeah, where did you go? You were supposed to go in there. Um, yeah. Uh, let's uh, let me introduce the rest of the crew. But I just want to let everybody know if you haven't figured it out, we are doing Dawn of the Dead from 1978, and we've been holding on to this one to do it at the right time. And mm -hmm. when the fans vote and they select it, well, by golly, that is the right time. So. That's why we're doing it tonight. We'll get more into that here in a little bit. All right. Also joining us is Bill Mulligan. Why can't I grab your head? There you are. Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. And Gizzy, the Decades of Horror Cat, is also here. Ha, as, Gizzy. As usual. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he deserves his own fan mail. Doing great. Hi, and uh, boy, looking forward to talking about this. Uh, this is one of the great ones. It, it, uh, yes, it is. It is. When you talk about horror movies, this is one of the ones that comes up, right? There's a few yeah. 70s. But this is and one of the most influential, not just for movies in general, but definitely for me with horror movies. Nice. Mm, this, this one really s set me on a road. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Also joining us tonight is Chad Hunt, a comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, Classic Era, and every other Decades of horror out there that we have. <laughs> All the does. There he is. How you doing? Chad? Dawn I'm, of I'm, the Chad. I'm awesome. I'm really excited to be here and to be talking about the Dawn of the Dead for the 150th episode. 150 episodes. Yeah. 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 Wow. wow. It's just awesome. Is that, awesome. Is that like sesquicentennial? Is that what, is that what that is? Uh, yeah, sure. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, let's That's call it dose, dose centennial. Yeah, I, you know, I I don't know where to go with that, but uh, let's get into this. We are going to dive into Dawn of the 1978. We're going to start off with. There's uh, only one I, way to go. I know when the... when we first watched it, and then we had you know what impressions it made, and then we're going to get into discussion. Then we'll wrap things up toward the end. You want to hang out for all that? Um, do we have uh, fan mail? This or fan mail? We'll, we do. We'll, we'll call it fan mail tonight. All right, excellent. From a flounder. Excellent. Yeah, there you go. Uh, feedback. what feedback? <laughs> There's something in my room. <laughs> I hate it when it gets too close to your face and you're like, ah! okay, sorry, I'm a bug. <laughs> it's like, no, wrong show. Um, all right, we are doing Don the Dead, directed, written, and directed by George A. Romero. The class include, include, the hey, English, yeah, includes I... David M. G. I, that's is it MG or MG? MG. M MG. MG. Okay. Ken Foray, Gay, Galen Ross, Scott H. Reniger. 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 I'm going to say that. And of course, Tom Savini. Sp special effects by Tom Savini and Don Barry and Gary Zeller. Uh, they did all the explosions. There were some explosions. The filming locations is Monroeville in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Famous, famous Monroeville Mall. Mm -hmm. They have conventions there now all right release date uh, of <laughs> the weekend of september 1st 1978 in italy is that right and then throughout april in 1979 the budget was a six and a half no six hundred and fifty thousand dollars almost said six and a half million but six hundred fifty thousand dollars the box office in domestic was 16 million um international was 49 almost 50 million um in the overseas especially in italy it was known as zombie which is important mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there was a zombie too which we call zombie zombie <laughs> <laughs> uh the synopsis as if you didn't know following the ever-growing epidemic of zombies that have risen from the dead two philadelphia swat team members and a traffic reporter and his Television executive girlfriend seek refuge in a secluded shopping mall. 
uh, where else would you go? Seems like you know that's the place to go. Yeah, makes sense. And for a while, well, it and for a while it works. Right? Well, I mean, if it, if it were now, it would be a Costco. But they didn't <laughs> yeah. have Costco. Yeah, you know, you, yeah. you know, oh my god, big box You're store. Right. Yeah, right, You're right, because it would have like uber supplies for like oh yeah time. one of those land of the giants tins of mayonnaise and everything yeah. last year a lifetime uh, a lot of malls are land of the dead now well, that, i know the, this is true the, the way of the monroe mall oh my gosh mm -hmm. uh all right let's get into this um let's see i'm gonna go with jeff moore jeff moore sir when did you first see dawn of the dead and what was your first impression I wish I could tell you the exact year. I think it was like uh, 81. It was early 80s. And I saw it at a midnight showing at the theater in uh, Ames, Iowa. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, uh, and actually, that theater is not open. I don't, well, wait, it, maybe it is. I think it is still open. But it was the only theater in town that actually had a balcony, even though it wasn't very big, but it had a balcony. And I sat in the balcony. And uh, it was the first time that I actually saw most of this type of effects on mm. screen. Mm. And I was actually a little nauseous at, at, during parts of it. Oh, <laughs> not, wow. Amazing. Not, not that I thought I was going to get sick, but it was like, holy crap. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the shock value hit me. And, uh, later on over the years now it's it's the romero's ability to give a you know to kind of depict the world we're in in these weird environments you know all the weird things that show up in this i'll leave that for later but it's it's an amazing amazing film yes incredible right all right bill mulligan sir you're up next uh, when hey. did you first see dawn of the dead and what was your first impression so this is a little complicated, but I went to a famous monsters convention in the late seventies. It could have been 76, 77. I'm not sure which one it was. It had Peter Cushing, um, had a whole bunch of cool stuff. Wonderful. And there was a table where a gentleman had severed limbs, really realistic looking. Now, I don't know if that was Savini and I, I don't even know for sure that it was from Dawn of the Dead, but I think it probably was. I haven't been able to confirm that researching it. For whatever reason, this movie was on my radar, and I knew it was going to be something special. And when the ads came out with Adolf Caesar's great voice and everything, and I was old enough now that I could go see a movie that was technically X-rated, went to see it, and it was... Uh, there's very few films that have been so mind-blowing to me. Star Wars, Matrix, Dawn of the Dead. I'd never seen a person leave a movie much less flee a movie, which is what they did with the very first shock scene, the head exploding. Mm. People ran from the theater and they never came back. And then when that was immediately followed with the, um, the zombie biting the woman on the shoulder in what still blows me away for its realism. And, and I'm just like, you know, up to that point, I had really been into films and a little bit of filmmaking. I was trying to do like Ray Harryhausen and stuff and quickly realized nobody can do Ray Harryhausen except Ray Harryhausen maybe right. and maybe forth. So that was not going to pan out. But when I saw this, I'm like, this, so here's something that clearly is special effects. I got to find out how this was done. So this movie really had a big influence on my life. And definitely, I, I mean, I was along for the ride. I loved it. I couldn't believe when it was over, just what I had seen. We stumbled in out of the parking lot late at night. It might have been a midnight show because it was unusual for unrated movies to, to get any showing at all. This was in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. We just staggered out there and just couldn't believe, you know, had to go to school or whatever it was we did the next day to tell everyone, you got to go see this thing. I saw it a couple more times in this run out there. Mm -hmm. so, My ride's yeah. coming. Jerry's coming <laughs> for you. Who is that? Is that yeah. <laughs> Not me. Not me. That's oh, no, me. No. That is me. That's you, Bill Mulligan. I can't I can't put you on silent. Uh, well, I think they stuff. miss I think they, they don't know where they're going. They're they're passing, passing my house. Oh well. <laughs> it worked. You turned the lights yeah. out, it worked. You missed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean I love this film and, and I consider it not just one of the most influential films for me, obviously, but really this is the movie. Night of the Living Dead gets credit for being the first of the modern zombies, but I really think this is the one that deserves the credit for creating 
the zombie movie as we know it today, the zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. This is the one that does it. And all the others, if there had never been Night of the Living Dead, of course, there probably wouldn't have been Dawn of the Dead. But if in some imaginary universe that film doesn't exist and this one had still come out, I think things pretty much would have gone on as they did. This one was just, it just caught the zeitgeist, not just the horror, but the adventure aspect of zombie films too. And here was a new way of, of telling a story with a, you know, zombies themselves, we always joke, zombies are not the most interesting monsters compared to vampires or werewolves. It's the people in the zombie movie. So this this gave us a whole new, whole new thing to work with. And every time they think it's been tapped out, that there are no more zombie stories to tell, my God, someone comes along and it's the biggest hit on Netflix or whatever. They, you know, set them in the past, set them in the future, zombies that can think, people eating zombies. I don't know. Almost every idea has been done to the point where it's become a challenge to come up with a new idea. And so people keep coming up with clever new ideas to make zombie movies. They may never go away. Even been so, musicals. Yeah. Why not? Singing zombies, dancing zombies. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chad, sir, when did you first see Dawn of the Dead and what was your first impression? Um, I had already been sort of a fan of Night of the Living Dead. And um, I remember uh, living with my, you know, I was still a kid and it was around 1980. And uh, as I used to go to sleep at night, I would listen to the radio. And um, one of the radio spots for, Dawn of the Dead came over the radio and it was just uh, the one that says uh, when there's no more room in hell, the dead will, you know, and that, and I yes, was, yes. and then, then, then the guy goes, what would they eat? They'd eat you. <laughs> and, I, and I was, and I immediately jumped up, turned the light on. And uh, I think I went to sleep with the light on because that radio spot is the first I'd ever heard of this movie. And, and, um, scared that just that radio spot alone scared the living crap out of me and <laughs> and um but i did as soon as i knew that this this movie was out or coming out um i think they showed it night and dawn at the same time having wow. already seen dawn i wanted to see her or, or night i wanted to see dawn and was just blown away i mean this um especially the first sequence of the apartment complex raid mm -hmm. and uh, the basement when with these bodies wrapped up and, and they were moving and, oh, that was so gut wrenching uh, for me. It was just terrifying because it, like Bill said earlier, it looked and felt real. Um, like this was really happening somewhere or it could really happen somewhere, but that, I was so blown away by that first sequence before they escaped and, and in the helicopter to go to the mall um, and how that elaborated so much on night of the living dead. Um, it just, this has always been one of my top 10 favorite horror movies uh, of, of all time. And um, the whole sequence with the, the, the in the mall and um the characters, the characters are really what drew me in. Uh, of course, the zombie carnage uh, was, you know, never been seen. I've never seen anything like that before uh, in my life. So, um, yeah, it, it, it made such an impression on me that I've owned it in some form or another. I'm never without a copy of it, whether it's a VHS, uh, uh, DVD, yeah. Blu-ray. Uh, ne I'll never be without a copy of it. Um, um, and I, I bought a, um, it was a Blu-ray set that came out maybe 10, 15 years ago that had almost every cut on it. Yes, uh, I have that. All the radio spots, TV spots, um, uh, uh, stuff like that. And that's one of my most prized possessions. <laughs> um, you know, it, it just has, I think it was called the ultimate edition or something yeah. like that. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's one that I will always, I watch it every year, two or three times a year. <laughs> um, you know, I just love, I love it. I love it. And I'm really, really gl glad we're going to be talking about it. Yes. Yes. So I, I have a similar, uh, first impression, uh, Chad, I, um, 
by 1978, I was really into horror movies and I would do the thing where you'd look in the, the TV guides and the TV things that you get in the newspaper and you would mark you know, it all. Yeah, mark sure. it all. So I could, yeah. cut, I'd cut out the ads in the, in the paper every week, you know, yeah. every Sunday. Um, yeah. and, and I had a scrapbook full of all these ads. I was, I was huge. I loved horror movies by then. And um, so I was paying attention and I was watching, you know, the, the shows on the weekend and everything. So I'm like, in my teens somewhere and the commercial this the the commercial came on and it basically um sounded the same you know and except for it had this what looked like a moon coming up and it eventually turned out there was this guy's bald head and it was ugly you know the zombie it was, it's all yeah it's the yeah. artwork it's the artwork right. not the actual bald head but the artwork so and it just just vocally it and audibly it just made such an impression it was just mm -hmm incredibly chilling and so simple and then it cut to like um you know a stretch of you know um scenes that i i probably did not look at but the first time they came up I <laughs> was like this. yeah um because uh, uh, yeah so and i desperately wanted to see it and it, you know i lived in uh just outside dc at the time and it was playing in dc uh but like uh because it was you know it was not rated I think it only played like either at 10 o'clock or midnight. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. there was, there was nobody to take me because it was not in, you know, nearby. And so I never got to see it. It was always one that I got to see it. And then I remember getting Fangoria number one mm -hmm. and, and seeing those pictures, you know, it's got all kinds of, you know, gory monstrous things in there. Um, and I was just like, Oh, I gotta see this movie. And I, cannot for life me remember when i finally did get to see it i don't know mm -hmm. if it finally came on like hbo in two in the morning because sometimes they would do that i remember phantasm did that mm -hmm. or if i eventually rented it um but i did eventually get to see it um i got to see day of the dead in the theater uh but that's the only one i got to see originally in the theater mm -hmm. and um yeah this it is it is absolutely one of the best and most effective horror films mm -hmm. especially if you lived through that time when you knew what a mall was you know malls yeah. were huge and it just felt so apocalyptic right it just felt like there's nobody here you know i've never seen a mall with nobody in it mm -hmm. <laughs> now, now it doesn't mean anything because that's all you know they're all these empty. uh but you know you never seen them yeah it's just like wow and of course it starts off really gory and there's and then it stays gory uh and then it ends gory but there is a stretch in the second act where there's zombies present, but they're really, it's really not gory. Right. It's probably a good, yeah. what, half hour of them just, yeah. you know, satire, just satire, mm -hmm. them setting up and enjoying themselves and, you know, being all, consumers. All those, yeah, being yeah. consumers. Yeah. And it, and what's really cool is that that's not boring at all. It is really fascinating. You really get to know the characters and yeah. you know, there's, there's some stuff going on. You see them, you know, grasping for, um, uh, you know, a resemblance of life. So there's, there's yeah. really, it's really fascinating. Um, it's, you know, you know, it's interesting, Doc. I think this is where Romero's brilliance really comes into play. That opening 10 minutes where we are just thrown into a whole new world of extreme horror, extreme gore. It lets us know all bets are off. Everything that's, you that's, thought you knew about horror movies. Yeah. So then when you do get to that sequence, that is a little long, probably could have been trimmed a bit. Um, it doesn't really feel, especially at the time, it didn't feel like I, I didn't remember at all thinking I was bored because I knew what these people were capable of mm -hmm. and what was probably going to happen. This was the calm before the storm. Right. Having, al having already seen the storm in the beginning, and now we're having this build up, build we knew up. The stakes, you know, right? Yeah, yeah you know something stakes. bad's going to happen when the bikers show up. You're like, here it comes, and here it came. And of course, so, we did get the, the sequence when they're putting the trucks. In front of yeah. the, in yeah. front of, and that yeah. really was effective too. And that, that broke up that that second act. In yeah. There and, um, right, and losing one of our favorite characters. Well, not yet, so, but but we're getting there. Was, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, I um I yeah. So I finally did get to see it. Um, and I just want to share one more experience before we dive into like all kinds of spoilers and you know discussion. But I recently got to see this on the big screen at the. Um, the uh, Carolina Theater. Ah, Bill, oh, Bill wow. I believe you were there, right? Weren't, wasn't it that? No. And did you not go to that? Because I played. I think they did um, Shockwaves with it. 
Uh, oh, well, when was this? Uh, a couple of years back. Hey, okay, sure, sure. Well, you said recently. I thought, yeah, that that yes, well, I was like in that. the past decade. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what, what I'm saying by recently, we're moving old. fast. No, that that was that that was a great showing for both those films. Looked terrific at the Carolina. Yeah, oh my God, some it was so much. It was like seeing it again for the first time. It really mm -hmm. was seeing it on the big screen. It was the first time I'd seen it on the big screen, and um, it was so impressive. It you know the it it really looks great. It, it unfortunately made Shockwaves look worse for the wear, even though Shockwaves, for its own thing, is is fairly decent. It's, and a lot of fun, it's but, fine for what it is, but it's yeah. no Dawn of the Dead. No, no, it isn't. Dawn of the Dead certainly, you know, kind of <laughs> has effect on it. But anyway, I wanted to share that because it was so much fun, and um, and and, and Night of the Living Dead always was one of the few films that I watch on TV that I actually had to turn off because I was. <laughs> You, know, you run across the room because remember you had to run across the room and turn the knob yeah. and turn it off because before the zombies get you. Yeah, I know we didn't have right. any remotes or anything. And uh, but yeah, that 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 one and Carrie for some reason Carrie mm. scared me to death. And um, yeah, so those the, this one didn't scare me in that you know because it was just fascinating. It, it I don't think nowadays it's really a scary movie, but it certainly is a white knuckle movie right because yeah. you're mm -hmm. you're you don't want your characters to get hurt and, and yeah. when it's an action adventure like, movie with yeah. with set and, well, they're, and they're not safe you know they're not safe oh no, the no. you don't you know you don't know for sure they're gonna come yeah, yeah. now i the other end. i you know it, it still holds up so to segue mm -hmm. into our discussion it still holds up today and still incredibly powerful mm -hmm. it is weakened somewhat just because everybody has aped it right everything has sure. been stolen yeah. out from under it. all the all the great films have that you know slight effect yeah. to it um uh and there's just been so many zombie movies and every zombie every zombie movie out there in one way or another points back to this film mm -hmm. like i said yes there are you know there are there's you know probably a half a dozen films in between well at least yeah let's say a half a dozen there's a number of films in between that actually have the ghoul zombies instead of the you know uh, the the uh, what what do you call them? Um, fast zombies. <laughs> I don't know well, we, yeah, we haven't got to the fast zombies yet. Oh, okay. Um, but the uh, voodoo, the voodoo zombies. Thank you. I could not yeah. get that word out of my face. So up until you know night, it was all voodoo zombies, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know, and then it was in between, right? So depending on who brought it in, you know, you get Sugar Hill. Right. It's voodoo. You get um, Manchester zombie Mord. is voodoo. Manchester yeah, Morgue. Enough. Yeah, Manchester Morgue's more like uh, Night and Dawn, where it's pseudoscience. Uh, I'm to remember. What about Plague of the Zombies? Well, Plague, well, the difference to me is. Plague was in, more voodoo ish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the, it's not the origin so much. I mean, uh, it, yeah. it, it can be. But the fact, whether or not they actually eat flesh, right? Whether right. they're a voodoo uh, or flesh right. eater. Okay. So um, they often weren't flesh eaters. I don't know right. if I, I I'm, maybe there is one. I'm I'm sure there's a book out there. There hasn't. Yeah, yeah. Now that 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 pretty much <laughs> fell by the wayside. When was the last time we had a non-flesh eating zombie movie? Except I guess Serpent in the Rainbow, if you want to slip that one in. But that that's I mean Romero's vision just pretty much got ingrained. Nine yeah. out of ten people would probably think that's the way zombies have always been, right. instead of being at the more yeah right when modern I was a kid. Everybody knew Dracula and Frankenstein and Wolfman and the creature and zombies were voodoo. Us. Zombies. Sure. They're, they're also us. You know, I mean, and, yeah, and yeah, they're eating you. They want to eat you. Uh, and and it's, holy and cow. Now, <laughs> anybody that you ask what are zombies, very few people are going to bring up voodoo. They're gonna, no, no, right. not at all. They're flesh eaters. Going to go right. to the viral. Yeah, they're going right. to be very disappointed if they ever watch White Zombie and they're like, okay, here comes the eating part. And like, well, they're just working in a stone <laughs> mill. Right, right. You know? right. Same they're, just at, they have a, they're just like workers with a really bad union. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scary movie, though. Yeah, it's a great movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's an effective well, subject. Romero popularized the whole thing. Yeah, eating, eating. But they're also it's also interesting that they were lumbering, right? For some reason, they had to lumber. Yeah, because um, they're dead. They should yeah, lumber. Right, I don't right. understand this fast zombie nonsense. They're dead. I can barely non-lumber now. 
<laughs> as a living creature of flesh and blood. If I got, if I was dead, I would feel pretty bad if I suddenly gained the ability to exercise better than I can now. So, you know, they ought it's to be like, dead. Yeah, it's like the beginning of Shaun of the Dead when he's like, oh, and all he's really yeah. doing is yeah, stretching in the morning, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. But, uh, uh, and, and very, very rarely do they talk, but it's, it's usually awesome when they do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the exceptions prove the rules. I mean, uh, Return of the Living Dead is a great movie, and so much, a lot of the stuff that we associate with zombies now, <laughs> brains, brains and yeah. came from that. But it's really a kind of a one of a kind. There aren't that many good zombie movies that that took Return of the Living Dead's thing. Return of the Living Dead sort of took the Romero thing and played with it. And that's great. It's a great film. Take nothing away from it. But if you're going to make a zombie movie, you're way better off doing Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Dead. Now, the remake of Dawn of the Dead totally violates everything that I just said. And I love it. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah. But it's but, the fast zombies. Yeah. Yeah. Fast zombies are not scary, they are exciting and makes for an even more action adventure film. But if you want to have any scares whatsoever, slow zombies, fast zombies are just basically bears and bears are, you know, well, when yeah. you grew up, when you grew up with the Romero stuff, slow moving zombies, that's, that was a zombie. Uh, yeah. when, when the remake of Dawn came around, uh, and they're running for some reason, yeah, it's exciting, but it's not as scary. Oh, not at uh, all to me at all at all. I mean, it, it is still gruesome that they eat. They're, they're eating people and that kind of thing. But um, and that debate will, has gone on ever since that movie came out of right. fast, fast zombies versus slow zombies. But I just feel like uh, the slower zombies are, are scarier because Absolutely. They, they, they give you time to think about what right. they're going to do to you. And then they overpower you just numbers. They just or, or make you overconfident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and you get tired slow. and they never get tired. So, I mean, they might only be going five miles an hour and you can run 30 for a while yeah. but eventually you're gonna have to take a nap and they're just they never they just take keep naps. coming they, they just keep, keep coming. on coming yeah. and there's usually it's a scary. few more of them on the other yep. side where yeah. you're running yeah. to so yeah. you can get, get stuck yeah <laughs> just ask just ask roads from a there you yeah go. There you go. uh so yeah the, the the first 10 minutes of this movie Oof. is definitely worth yes. uh, a two-hour discussion in and of itself just mm -hmm. the, yeah. what was accomplished um the first thing um without getting into the gore is just the makeup alone okay so what's to me what was oddly scary is just a, it, they're just discolored right yeah. they're just they're they're palish and or bluish bluish and, and it just it just feels wrong right it just feels like oh god there's yeah. something wrong yeah. Yeah. and yeah. um now Sabini know. was not a big fan of how things looked on the film, yeah. especially the blood, and and also he he says now that they weren't supposed to be bluish; they were supposed to be cadaver gray. But for whatever reason, when the film got developed, the gray kind of took a blue tinge, and the red looks like poster paint. Yeah, yeah, but it. it I mean, he it, still it, hates it. I and I get where he's coming from, but I can see why Romero said, "No, this is great. That cartoonish quality." Yeah, like yeah, a comic. He wanted you know. the, but yeah, the comic book look. Yeah. yeah, and you got you know, Hammer films. The blood looked exactly like that too. So it's not like yeah, we had you know, it's not right. like we don't know what that's supposed to be. Right. Uh, but I I don't know that that look. I mean, nowadays most zombies look like you know, kind of gray brown rotting corpses, and mm -hmm. I love that too. Don't get me wrong, but this one. Um, you know, they just looked like it was otherworldly. It looked, yeah, like, yeah it was, it was yeah, alien. You know, yeah. And, and there was no real rhyme or reason to it when, um, when oh, I can't remember the character's name now, but when the one guy dies and zombifies, he goes from being a Roger, human yeah. to, yeah, when Roger becomes a zombie, uh, he, he very quickly goes to very wrinkly, very bluish. I mean, they, you, you Second actually hours, trans, yeah. yeah, you transform into a monster. And that's not something that we we've seen most of the zombie movies. You you know most zombie movies when you turn into a zombie, you look enough like yourself that you fool people into right. it's like, hey, look, Bill got out of his sick bed. He's doing better. Ah, and and you know, but Roger, no one be going up and giving Roger a hug. Huh. Yeah. Or Flyboy for that matter. Yeah, Flyboy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, Flyboy looks. Yeah. Well, yeah, he so got chewed on, so you can sort of see. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he went faster. Him. It's a great that, look. That up. was a cool touch when the elevator door opened and the zombies were reaching, and, and, and then they come back off because 
He's already well, first of all, that, that shot of it. them running at the camera with their hands out is so iconic. Yeah. It's such a great shot. And, uh, and yeah, the fact that they stop and they see him and it always, I remember even then I was like, why do zombies, how do zombies know that yeah. you're a zombie? Could you pretend to be a zombie? You know, thinking there's, I don't know, pheromones <laughs> or something. And they don't, and they're not true cannibals because zombies don't eat zombies. Right. They, they eat living, the living. So yeah, I mean, even then watching this film, it got my, it got the motors in my head going about. I shot a Super 8 zombie film not long after watching this. Had to. Had to. What choice did I have? I think every kid no. with a Super 8 camera who saw this movie went out and, and got his friends together and, you know, mucked, I mucked drew up their faces. I drew a zombie wow. comics. Like, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, the thing that got me about the first 10 minutes was the it made me feel like it resonated on what a lot of what's happening now 40 years later. <laughs> yes. People not mm -hmm. believing the science and um and then the the kind of some of the prejudice that, that went into it too you know yeah. the one guy on the uh rogers team that mm -hmm. went nuts going after hispanics and, and right. african americans yeah because so. it is it is the projects right air quotes the project yep. yep i guess back and, in the day it actually was the project and then later on you might not be able to identify with empty malls although i who i worked in a mall for 13 years so I walked in an empty mall quite a bit. It wasn't that big, but um, you know, when you close the store, there wasn't people out there walking around. But uh, the idea that they had everything they wanted, they could get everything they wanted. They were eating caviar, champagne, mm -hmm. fur coats, go to the bank, wads of money, uh, guns galore. But mm -hmm. that, you know, and that's that wasn't the thing. Obviously, it's different because they're just four people trapped in a room, kind of. But um, still, the, the idea behind that, I think, is uh, yeah, you know, money doesn't buy you happiness, right? But it's not heavy-handed, right? And no, I not. think that this is the film that Romero had the best balance between yeah. storytelling and social commentary. And I think one of the unfortunate things, and I love George Romero. But I think a lot of people after this film just kept telling them, oh, man, the social commentary was great. The social commentary, the, the, the satire, the this, the that. And it's kind of like when they came to him after Night of the Living Dead and said, you're so bold to cast a black man as a hero. And he's like, he was the best actor we had. I mean, you know, I wasn't really thinking yeah. about that. Um, you know, I feel like, and I love Day of the Dead. In some ways, it's one of my, it's my favorite of the three on certain days. Um but I think from day on, and definitely with the later films, it seems like the social commentary was the straw stirring the drink. You know, like that was the purpose. And, you know, what what are you doing? And he would describe the film as what the film, you know, how it plays into the zeitgeist of today and everything. And um, I feel like it, I just like the way that kind of happened organically in this yeah. film. He got kind of heavy handed with it on like diary. Oh, yeah. And, and, and oh, yeah. Just beating you on the head with it but yeah. this one is good it's there if you want to find it mm -hmm. but it's not it doesn't interfere with the story well yeah. and five years ago that didn't resonate that that first 10 minutes oh yeah you know, watching it's, it's it's strange was, it's strangely appropriate now <laughs> i was annoyed when i first watched it that here the world is falling apart and people in this news station are acting like idiots and you know, making bunny ears behind the guy and everything, doing all this and all. But you know, watching the way the media is carried on with COVID and everything else happening in the world, it's like, yeah, if things yeah. really were falling apart, like literally yeah. falling yeah. apart, all the professionalism would fly out the window. Well, to kind well, of go not, along with that, when they were in the the mall, they became so complacent because mm -hmm. they had everything contained right there meanwhile out right outside the wall is armageddon you know mm -hmm. i mean the world is just falling apart meanwhile they're they're giving each other diamond rings and having dinner and right you know right. like 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 normal and then and that that too goes along with a lot of people looking the other way about things and while things are just crumbling around them and, well, uh, go ahead i'm sorry jeff oh i'm i didn't mean to interrupt you if you weren't done no, go ahead. Um, the the also in the station, not just the uh, the idea of people fighting, arguing with the science, as the uh, the one guy who threw a fit when she took down the rescue locations, 
that yeah. were all closed. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, I don't care if they're all, if it's wrong information, nobody will watch if we don't have that up. How are we going to sell advertising? <laughs> You're like, dude, it's over. Yeah. There is no advertising for the Piggly mm -hmm. Wiggly. Which, which sounds very familiar too. Right? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, yeah, it hasn't changed. Oh, 40 years, 40 well, plus but this, years. This later. movie has layers. Humans are going to human. Yeah. This movie has layers. I could, you could make an argument. I've never heard anyone make this argument. You can make an argument that the bikers really are, you know, the good guys in this. I mean, who's, who are these four people to take over this entire mall and pig out on all this stuff? More than four people could probably live on in a lifetime. Meanwhile, the bikers, the working class, if you will, are living a pretty hard scrap of life on the outside. I mean, the numbers are beginning to turn. And uh, they're coming in here to get their share of the pie. Who's to deny them that? You can make that argument. You can make a lot of arguments with this film. It gives you lots of, yeah, lots of grist for the mill here. I mean, there's lots of good stuff here. Land touched on that a lot. The mm -hmm. class, you know, different the classes. So, so I think Romero said yeah, that in yeah, this I'm film, good. things have evened out. That there's equal numbers of humans and zombies, which is an interesting time, and it doesn't last long because. <laughs> The nature of the beast if, if everyone who dies becomes a zombie it doesn't take very long for the numbers to work against us mm -hmm. you know especially when there's no more food coming in and gasoline's becoming scarce and you know so but, yeah but this so that's no an interesting internet. thing Not bad, but no. no internet <laughs> so so another interesting thing is like what's taboo and what's not so i mean we get uh, uh for peter Ken Forey's character gets attacked by zombie kids and he has to shoot them. I know. Mm -hmm. that, uh, who that were really like what? Uh, yeah. Sadini's niece and nephew, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yet, when the nun is trapped in the door, according to Galen Ross, Romero comes up to him and goes, yeah, don't let her go. Don't don't kill her. We, we can't kill nuns. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> kids are okay. Kids are okay. Kids are okay. Said when, the, when the two kids came running out, they did not tell Ken Forey. Yeah. So when he grabs him and throws him over to the side, that was like a real reaction that he had. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I just remember seeing that and being so affected. And, of course, you know, the, the one guy has got the gun pointed at him, and he, oh, yeah. the whole argument that spurns from that. You know, um, Ken, Ken Forey's like six foot six, and he was carrying a gun. I'm sure it was an unloaded gun. I think you're taking a hell of a chance sending your niece and nephew to surprise a guy <laughs> right. who's that big and has a gun. Because I, you know, he go, he might have a flashback or something, and just hit him with the butt of the gun right in the head. That's what I would do. Now so, that's blood. Yeah, <laughs> that looks whole, that looks <laughs> a lot better. Different color, strong color. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now those uh, kids were fast moving, so I guess kid zombies are fast. Yeah, they were fast moving. I didn't yeah. even think about that because yeah. they did just come out. They, they probably were eating pixie sticks when they got bitten by a zombie, so they got that, you know, yeah. sugar rush going. Yeah, and the ones table, that, donuts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and the ones that came in the elevator, the one, you know, they're they're a little faster, but I guess they have like they get that. They've got like they're not like you know alligators. <laughs> yeah, alligators are fairly slow moving animals, but they got that little burst of speed when when you're just about in their horrible jaws. Yeah, so you know. Yeah, given that the elevator doors open up, they've been knocking on these things for who knows how long. Yeah. Finally, it opens up, smell of fresh meat, and they go ah right in there. But mm. and then as soon as they see it's not lunchtime, it's slowly piddle yeah. out. Yeah. But you know, uh, I don't know if I'm jumping too far ahead, but uh, when Flyboy turns, his mm. death is really something about that. He's he's walking out there. He's, he's supposed to have like a broken ankle or something, you know, the way he's yeah. walking. And he's got this revolver hanging from one finger. He's not holding it right or anything. Mm -hmm. He's just blindly moving towards what's her name. Uh, well, yeah, because he, he remembers. He remembers where the, they the, are. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, that he has yeah. to go up the stairs so he could crash through the the fake wall. But uh, then when he comes through the door and they shoot him, that was I don't know something about that was really effective for me. The way he bashed, bashed up, it kind of fell over from the boxes, mm -hmm. and just more zombies came in. I, that was uh, that was emotional. I think. I, yeah. I don't know. That's... It was it was sad in a way. Yeah. Yeah, because well, yeah. you got to know him, and you know that. Yeah. You know, right. He's got he's got a family coming, right? Because the mm -hmm. 
Uh, well, anyway, it's our, yeah. our first clue that the zombies do retain some remnants of yeah. their earlier life. Although in this case, that's not a good thing because it allows him to know where to go get her. Well, I think he got a lot of he got a lot of flack when he did land, making the zombies become even more intelligent. And, and, but when you look back, even at, in night, they were using the cemetery zombie used a brick to try and break the window. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and that that that's something that he kept going through the whole series. I think is these things not are, they're not only dead and they're eating people, but they're also evolving, you know, in a way. Right. Where, where, and which I thought was an interesting. I always thought was an interesting point. A lot of people don't like that. They they just think zombies should be mindless, shambling mm -hmm. things. But who's to say whatever caused this outbreak of zombies that is not evolving? these bodies into something yeah. else. Hey, whatever, whatever else you can say about them, zombies still have the biggest brain of any animal on earth. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, maybe this is like being born again and they're just like little infants. They're hungry and that's all they are. This are, they only think about eating, but given even a few years of just shambling around, you got to pick up a few things here and there. At least yeah. you become a better shambler. You're shambling <laughs> the right direction. Shambling I don't know. The right direction. And they go in the herds, right? But yeah. Of course, Romero would, you know, bring us Bub. Yeah. <laughs> Bud. Yeah. Bud, Bub, yeah. Bud, 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 Bub. 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 Um, and, uh, you know, he shot a gun. So. Mm -hmm. So I also and saluted. saluted. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that was, oh my God. Awesome. That, yeah. One of the, that, one of the things that's, that's really impressive. Power. One of the things that's really impressive about the film, I think, is the the atmosphere that Romero sets up. That everybody just felt like they it, it sounded like everybody was just happy to be there, even though they're mm -hmm. shooting overnight, even though it's really cold. Everybody's flocking to be a zombie. It's like <laughs> it's like this cool atmosphere. Oh, uh, Savini's running around like a kid in a candy shop because anything he thinks up. Romero lets him try. I wish um, I had just gotten in a car and driven out there. Yeah, if I'd well, known and, that they were filming. And even it sounds like Galen Ross changed the direction of the film too by uh, refusing to scream. And yeah, I don't know if yeah. that if that conversation of her where she tells him, "Look, things are going to change. <laughs> You're going to include me. You're going to." Mm -hmm. And then uh, Peter says. Well, then you got to learn how to handle yourself. And then you see her getting like shooting lessons and stuff like that, which was, which uh, that all yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it was kind of neat to have her uh, stand up to them because they were just kind of running, doing their thing. And she was like stuck back there. Uh, and that, that's pretty uh, radical for horror movies. Even late as this is 1978, most, most horror films, the, the female character was just there to be grabbed by the creature or yeah. you know, cower behind the hero and, and scream, scream, sob. scream a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Seventy-eight doubled down on that, right? Between that mm -hmm. and Halloween. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, scream queens were were a thing at this point. And there's nothing. Thing. There's nothing wrong with with the damsel in distress. I mean, it would look ridiculous to have if Halloween was filmed there. And and Jamie Lee, I want you to stand up to him and never scream and just fight. It's like, oh, okay, that would be. Because I, if something like that's coming at me, I am screaming, screaming like a like a schoolgirl in the Mikado. I mean, come on, everyone would. But but I liked her character here, and and I didn't get the feeling like it was forced or anything. I just feel like she's seen so much horror yeah. already. It was a natural. It felt natural, like a natural. Right. right. She learns how to. She learns how to fly the helicopter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Which is probably exactly what would happen. I mean, absolutely. You know, they're, which is a good thing, right? Because she's got to yeah. fly it later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at some uh, some stuff, and then we'll we'll dive back in. But I want to go into the posters because this is the artwork that I talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, because this they, hung on the wall of my college dorm. Oh, mm -hmm. I bet it did. But the you know the uh, the commercial had you know it cut off right at the top of the head where the the, the blood. Yeah, was. It, 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 if it I remember up. that commercial, it slowly rose yep. like yeah. it was the dawn, dawn you know. Yep. What a simple then, design, too. I mean, yeah. really just easy, simple design. Uh, they don't make posters like that anymore. Now it's all blue and, you know, teal and amber. Mm -hmm. right. Just bo yeah. boring posters. You didn't. You don't get anything graphic like this now. I mean, half the poster is taken up just by the title. Yeah, but wow, the power of it, right? So, yeah. But a, a I, great I, tagline. What a killer tagline. It, 
We didn't do the taglines, did we? Were there uh, any other ones besides this? For there was well, one. Go ahead. Go ahead I'm Jeff. sorry. Uh, the, I think the one tagline, the last one we had on there, was one I remember so well. Where um, I have to look at it now, but um, I did after I just said I remember it so well. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, right. Uh, I can't find my tagline. So here we go. Was it was it like where night ended, dawn began? Yeah, yeah. And and the the announcer that was doing it, his voice was a. Uh, now George Romero brings us the most intensely shocking motion picture experience of all time. It was just that was just old school <laughs> selling a picture right yeah. there with, with a, with a it, tagline. It worked. I I literally thought this was going to be the scariest movie I'd ever see for the longest mm -hmm. time. You know, yeah. anticipating mm -hmm. seeing it because mm -hmm. it just, you know, it, you know, it was, it wasn't rated, so I couldn't go see it. And, you know, and <laughs> it had all this, you know, every, you know, the magazines were starting to talk about it and, you yeah. know, it looked gory. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, can I actually see that and not? Well, you know, poop my well pants. the, the <laughs> unrated aspect of it was, was, you know, I mean, you saw that little tag at the bottom where it's basically, there is no graphic sex in this film. Nevertheless, there was right. scenes so shocking that you can't see it if you're under you 18. Can't. You're like, holy crap, what's in this movie? Yeah. There's exactly. no sense, but you, I can't see you, it. You can't go to this movie and say you weren't warned. No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. That's true. Um, so here's a couple of other ones. One where it's called zombie. Zombies. Mm -hmm. And one where it's called Japanese symbols. But um, mm. But it's got yeah. You know, I do I, I do like that bottom poster though. Just the, the yeah. Blood, yeah, and the and the people coming Not, in. And, I yeah. think I've never seen that one. Yeah, I, I just found that. And I'd like to have that on my wall too. Mm. All these could go on the wall. All right, there's there's Fran, right? Mm -hmm. Right, played by mm -hmm. Galen Ross. Um, what? Who? Gosh, what a great character! What a great great character, well played, and she didn't do a whole lot besides this and, film. And I, uh, yeah, and I think this is like the first thing she did too. Uh, hmm. You know, some of the commentaries and stuff. She basically says she lied through her teeth to get the job. <laughs> And she, kept she, thinking she was, you know, the one uh, blonde zombie. Yeah, shows up a bunch of times. She kept thinking she would get. She'd look at the dailies and said, "I can't. I, I'm going to get replaced by this blonde zombie because I'm so bad." <laughs> you know, and, and Romero just told her to quit worrying about Apparently it. Apparently, she yeah. she lied about being a good um, ice skater. Yeah, that one yes. scene there. Oh, yeah. and, but you know, you hear this a lot from successful actors. So there's a tip. It's like if they say, "Can you ride a horse?" You say, "Can I ride a horse?" <laughs> And the answer is no, you've never been on a horse, but <laughs> you've got a week before they start shooting the horse scene. So you go to a, you know, you, you try to do what you can, mm -hmm. but you never say you can't do something because that might be crucial. It's like, yeah. oh, you almost had it, but there's a scene with a horse. So, oh, my. Just the, the remake, if you guys noticed, one of the stores was named Galen Ross in the, oh. the mall, the mall mm -hmm. in the remake. Nice, nice. Yeah, she made three films, all of them horror films, Dawn of the Dead, of course, Madman. Yeah. And uh, Creepshow playing Betty Vickers. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Oh, oh, yeah. No, something to tide you over. Yes. Yeah. So she she was the, the wife, right? Yeah. The, oh, nice. Um, But she did some uh, documentary directing, it looks like, oh, yeah. over the last yeah. couple decades. So, yeah, inter when you see interviews with her, she's clearly really intelligent. And, yeah. Um, Probably yeah, be a fun I thought person. she did a great job. Yeah. yeah. In, in it. Um, so, I uh, mean, she she went from not doing anything and this being her first movie to being one of the most memorable women in and her a instincts, horror movie. Yeah, her instincts were right about not yeah. letting this become yeah. just a scaredy cat. That would have yeah. um, that would have changed things for yeah. the worse. I know what what some that's some balls though to tell him that. The, uh, good for her. Uh, yeah. Ken for Ray. <laughs> Yay! Um, I've seen him on Nickelodeon. Oh yes, you have. I've <laughs> seen him at conventions. <laughs> uh, he's he's a he's a good guy at conventions. Yeah, very very uh, amiable. He seems like a good guy. <laughs> yeah, loves talking to the crowd and mm -hmm. yeah. approachable. And there's right, there's yeah. uh, you know the bottom picture has another very famous. There's a number of very famous zombies mm -hmm. and just. You know the guy who gets his head lopped off. This guy with the you know the melted face, half yeah. his face kind of melted. The um, uh, the uh, higher Krishna's on. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Oh, Mike. Michael Christopher. I've no. I've worked with him on a film. He's yeah, he's a good guy. 
But Ken Forey, I mean, and his character, you know, th this is a guy, he's not always, he's not always the most sympathetic character, you know, right. not, he's not exactly Mr. Warmth or anything, mm -hmm. but, but there, you know, the cat, but he's, but he's competent. Mm -hmm. He's good at what he does. And he's definitely of, of all the people on that team. He's the one I would absolutely want to have on my side. Right. right. So he, as an audience, you root for him. He had a spot in the remake too, I think, where he gave us the line of when there's mm -hmm. no more room in hell. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, and then we have Flyboy, uh, David MG, MG uh, yeah. played Steven. We call him Flyboy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's <laughs> well, how how do you characterize his his role? He's he's a normal guy in a horrible situation. I mean, he he comes across as not entirely competent, but he's what I would be thrown into that. I mean, that's the, none of this is in yeah. my skill set killing right. people and stuff so well and he's he's like one of those guys that's he's somebody in the real world you know he flies right. a helicopter he's a traffic reporter he's somebody right. that's known and now mm -hmm. he's doesn't have any he's got one usable skill now he can fly the helicopter which as usable skills go there's a good is a skill good to have it's very uh, very crucial for these guys uh, but he's course, he's clearly not the alpha male or the beta male and i'm not sure what the next letter down the list is but he's probably a few below that too I think Fran him. actually is above him on the uh, I would think alphabet so. scale. Yeah, he eventually becomes a Zed male. So. Yeah, he does uh, become Zed. Uh, but mm -hmm. that that picture down below, um, it's great. That, that's the, the blood looks it. great. Oh man. my gosh! Yeah, it, uh, yeah, you know that one. The blood looks better than it does in a lot of the others. I'm not sure why. He looks more greenish actually than mm -hmm. than bluish. But whatever, it works. It works. For one thing, he's wearing the right color shirt. I can't tell you how many people have shown up for zombie shoots wearing dark colored shirts. And I just want to, I just want to throw water on them and send them on their way because all my good blood is just going to look like water anyway. You know, if you're going to be a zombie with a bloody shirt, make it a shirt where the blood shows up. Safety mm -hmm. tip, okay? Just mm -hmm. if you want to be seen. But that looks that's uh, great. Pastel or a white, yep. And it's also a shocking reveal because we knew this character. And we knew what he was when he was alive, and to suddenly open it up and all of his humanity is just yeah. gone. Yeah. And it's also, Boom. you know, the scene when it opens up and all the zombies come rushing in is scary. And yeah, zombies. it is. And his reaction, I just like his. Re he looks at them with kind of like you know, f off, and, and he's he's angry. He's pissed off that he's been turned into a zombie, and 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 not a good looking zombie either. You know, kind of one that's all screwed. I gotta go through eternity looking like this. These are these are. These are your zombie clothes. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we have Roger Scott uh, Rain, yeah. Rain, Reniger. 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 Um, that's another one that, you know, he he gets bit early, and you know, like they do, they push him around in the yeah in the in the cart for a while, but when he turns, and it's sad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, mm -hmm. the picture that we have with Foray is like you know right here where he's got the because he shoots the other you know. Yeah. You don't know up, what he's going to do there for a second. It brings mm -hmm. up a thing too about how long the process takes to become a zombie. It took him forever to turn. Where Flyboy, by right. the time they'd opened the elevator, he was a, he was a zombie. Already. Well, he died from loss of blood. This guy died from whatever septic infection you yeah. get from being bitten by these filthy mouse yeah. mfers. So, you know? uh, yeah. So I've always thought it, that sounds it good. depends on how you die. Right. The, you know, the zombie bite might. And that whole that whole or... sequence where you know pulling the sheet the sheet coming down and everything and his initial look you see a little of it there in the bottom shot there's a look of kind of like confusion you know again I just think of like a baby being born and looking around and it's like what fresh hell is this you know uh, where what am I what fresh hell is this? Yeah. and then and then the yeah. hunger kicks in and it's like oh now I know what I need to do I need to rise up slowly and start chomping but because he's well, like he's... he's the character I'd most want to be. You know? Well, these characters are very well delineated because he's yeah. he's sort of the guy that doesn't thinks he can do everything, but doesn't get his limitations. Like right, right. off the bat, he jumps on that woolly guy, which is admirable. But uh, yeah. you know, he he was a pretty big guy. He was probably wasn't going to do nothing with him unless he knew some kind of special martial arts. Hmm. Which he's a little he's a smaller guy, especially if you're staying next to Ken Forey. Most people mm -hmm. are smaller guys, but he's scrappy. And yeah, and yeah. and he you know throws himself into things, which of course is you know. a lot of iconic moments in this film, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, yeah. and, oh, and also, you know, 
when he gets bit and you know when they're yeah. doing the, the, the truck thing and that one grabs it, you're like, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like the fact, even when he's injured, it's not like he's going to sit back and let the others do the work. It's like, put me in a shopping cart and uh, roll me around. I'll we'll shoot at him from the, the shopping yeah, we'll cart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a tank. He's a cool character. Yeah. And it's sad to see him go. It's a it's a real bummer. The film definitely takes a, You know, you've sort of gotten into the excitement of we got our own mall and we're shooting zombies and da-da-da. And then this happens and it... it well, things never, ne things never take a turn for the worse in Romero movies. Sure. <laughs> oh, George is calling. Um, <laughs> let's look at. Speaking of, zombies, put Chad on the phone. Put put him on the phone. My phone does not have the. It has this. Okay, it has this little red thing that says "hang up," and you you can hit it as often as you want. It doesn't do anything. It just makes you feel like you've tried to do something. If you hit one of the volume buttons on the side, it'll shut off. What? Yeah. It'll I was this years old when I learned. That. I'll try that again. I'll try that again next time Tom Gore calls me. Oh, Tom Gore. Yeah. Uh, no, you're not supposed to answer when Tom Gore calls you. <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate. Tom Gore, and here's the shot that we have right in the middle here. Oh, look at that. Uh, um, yeah, talk about famous zombies. And, uh, here's that, some of our that, iconic that, zombies. Yeah. That shot at the top. That, I, that picture was in Fangoria number one, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, oh, my gosh. Just that. It just like, what? does this film do you know um i did this character for halloween i got a flannel shirt bald head cap liquid latex which wasn't easy to find at the time mm -hmm. now you can go to michael's or whatever Hobby which one did you do? the guy at the top oh the, the yeah the, the melted zombie the classic guy. yeah melted zombie mm -hmm. face guy just you know flat the red flannel shirt is what really sells it then that head explosion holy what, crap what what a you, what the f moment was. i my jaw dropped because like did i just see that and and that's the thing too you know this was in a movie theater there's no rewinding right 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 and it, it's so fast too it's almost subliminal you learn okay this is one of those movies where i can't blink i can't look mm -hmm. down to to find my uh milk duds yeah all right i might miss something really critical here right, that was right. that's when the people left because the boy that is and, and, and it's the first 10 minutes so yeah, yeah. now you yeah. now you know what you're in for right yeah <laughs> Well, machete whole, zombie uh, oh yeah, yeah I was gonna say, machete zombie i met him at a convention too and he actually he was selling clock i wish i'd picked one up he was selling clocks that have that image on the clock wow. you know <laughs> it's great what, what an what an ingenious effects oh, this was at the time so simple and so effective yeah and so i think i think savini used it maybe in a friday the 13th movie oh, too. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah. Yeah. But around the neck instead of through the head. And, I mean, that's what's really super admirable about Savini is just when you see how he did it. It's magician stuff, and it's yeah, simple yeah, yeah. once you know how it's done. Mm -hmm. Well, like he's the one who did it, and he did it so well. I hadn't thought of it, but he he said that he always liked having the victim's real face in the shot because if right. you had a if you had like a uh, mm -hmm. a, a cast or something or a mold. You, you had to do real quick cuts and this way you could show longer shots from reacting yeah uh so by having that yeah and the elvis night. painting in the back just brings that whole picture yeah. 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 of course that's got it's got to be a black velvet one too yeah. and then mike mike christopher on the bottom who still looks exactly the same today by the way it's been so many years and he can still pull that off mm. um and he's he's he was a fun guy worked with him on um a few brains more summer of blood an indie film we shot a few years ago and he came up from florida to be in it and was just an absolute delight wow. nailed nailed his his lines it was he was he was a lot of fun to be with <laughs> good guy all right here oh, we go uh, helicopter the helicopter, helicopter frank, dude a guy that looks like frankenstein somewhere. yeah <laughs> yeah well, they had to build up his head so they could be chopped off they, they said they picked him because he had a low forehead Okay. That's just his forehead is normally low, so you can make it bigger and still look semi plausible. Mm -hmm. Savini said that the head was really rounded, and and that was the hair was making the shape, and he wished they would have like yeah thrown combed water and combed it down because <laughs> it does take away a little from the gag. I mean, he was trying to pull it off like flapjacks, and <laughs> which is great. Um, I mean, I I laughed when, when that happened. In the theater, we were so stressed out at this point because we just seen, you know, explosion, bite on the shoulder, still one yeah. of the most amazing shots ever. 
and, and everything else. And then this one happens, and it's actually kind of a funny scene. I mean, we're building up suspense. The zombie's coming. It's like, how's our hero going to? Oh, the zombie just stupidly walks into the propellers, bloop, 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 like a yeah. Warner Brothers cartoon, and then he falls over. And that's that's funny. Yeah, because we already had the kids too, right? We had the two right. kids and, and, yeah. and the uh, the I don't know how you do the melted face on me. So, know, they, so they this had one the was simulated brain and the pumping mm -hmm. blood too. You mm -hmm. know, for, yeah, yeah. And and of course you had Roger's reaction as well, which was classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Great stuff. And of course, I think I was gonna say just the lady on the top, the bride. I think this movie is also the one that it didn't really go overboard with it, but it's the one that kind of started with the now cliche of zombies that are identifiable and whatever their day job was. Clown zombies. Clown zombies, right. bride zombies, nun yeah. zombies. Yeah. And you know what? In honesty, next time you're you're downtown or something walking around, notice how few clowns, nuns, zombie uh, brides <laughs> that you run into. Pretty much everyone looks the same. Right. But in zombie world, they're much more interesting people than the folks well, I hang out with, apparently. So Romero said, too, that like they said he, he didn't give him any directions on how to be a zombie other than move slow. But other, otherwise, it was just be dead. And then people had to also remember what their walk was so that mm. in subsequent days when they were doing that, that they had yeah. kept their own individual walks. So you could identify them. I think she's uh, the one, the bride, isn't she the one in the... When they turned all the power on in the mall and all the all the electrified displays start going and there's like the mannequin turned back mm -hmm. and forth and then it shows her walking and she's going, uh, it's like how they were all imitating the, yeah, you know, or, or, or yeah, like, like their uh, motorized displays in the shops. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you something, that thing you just said about the way the zombies walk, that's a real problem when you're shooting a zombie movie. You've got to really be on the ball about that. Otherwise, what you'll see is when you get the dailies back, Everyone, everyone in the crowd will be looking around. They'll find one person who's doing something distinctive, and they will all imitate them. Yeah. And then, but then there might be another crowd on the other side that's imitating someone else. So you got half the people walk around like Glenn Strange doing Frankenstein, mm. and then the others are doing. You know, they've all got the same limp, like they've all simultaneously stepped on a nail on their right foot because they're dragging that foot. Like, okay, everyone, mix it up. Well, I've heard Romero say at one point he, he encouraged everybody to come up with their own zombie walk and mm -hmm. then remember, remember that walk because that's going to be your walk and you know, to keep continuity mm -hmm. going. But I thought that was kind of a cool idea for him to tell them that uh, so that they wouldn't copy each other, I guess, right. or they'd come up with their own thing. Yeah. Everyone needs to come up with their own character and their yeah. character story and how they became a zombie and play on that. <laughs> Nowadays, you have to go to a zombie class. And yeah. Zombie now, zombie. Walking, now you, walking Dead. Took you look at Walking. Zombie. I'll tell you, Walking Dead does a great job. There's no one in Walking Dead who's going into business for themselves. Like, I'm going to be a fast zombie. It's like you bounce you right out of here if you're not doing the Walking Dead walk. So, yeah, they, they Which we wouldn't have if it wasn't for Romero, oh, as far as I'm concerned. Sure. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. All right. Oh, we did that one. Uh, Tom Savini. Hey, there he uh, is. Got to talk about Tom Savini because um, this between this and uh, Friday Thirteenth put him on the map. Yes. Um, oh yeah. Yes, and, uh, you're right. That Friday Thirteenth too. Between these two, this is what made him a superstar. And I don't know if people today realize it, but there was a time Tom Savini was as much a legit horror star as a Peter Cushing, a Boris yeah. Karloff, uh, you know, Richard Edlund, you know, it, it, he was, he was famous. He was on the tonight show. He was on the Simpsons. Oh, yeah. I, I'd say he well, still yeah, is. Oh, he still, he yeah. still is. I mean, I think, you know, it, it he, you know, but more behind the scenes. Time. So I spent 13 years in a mall. I worked at a Walden bookstore. That was before, the, they, uh, be before they added Walden books, apparently. Nice. And he was a good actor too. Underrated, I think. He I mean, was, yeah. You know, he, he played certain, you know, maybe not widest range. I don't know if I'd cast him as King Lear, though maybe I would. But he was always good in every role that that he got. Oh, um, he ended up being like uh, head stuntman too, I think. Yeah, that I, that's the thing too. You know, when you when you hired um, Tom Sabini, you also got a stuntman. Yeah, yeah. Who Which was he not afraid that... to do crazy stuff. 
He did that stunt where he was thrown from the top tier yeah. in the mall. Mm -hmm. I think he hurt his back when he did that because he missed the boxes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. Of course, he. Uh, I Night Riders is. He was that. excellent in no, Night Riders. I mean, generally a good portrayal of that character. Mm -hmm. And I think most. I would say that the generation now would probably remember him from Dust Till Dawn, as as far as his acting. Sure. Because of the you know the gun, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and plus his name you know he's Sex Machine and yeah, and then he's he, great in Grindhouse. Yeah. He re reprised his role of of uh, in Land of the Dead again, where he was zombified. And ah, he's yeah. still, I can't remember what his his name was in in Dawn. Was it Blades Blades or, I, or yeah. something like that? Might be Cho listening. Chopper Chopper. That was his yeah. name. Now he runs his own school and. Um, has has been, produced some excellent makeup people, and I don't know if it's still in print or not. But his books, the Grand, oh yeah, Grand, um, oh, Grand Illusion, God. excellent. Oh, oh yeah, gosh. anyone who wants to do this sort of thing, get those books. They are a treasure yeah. trove. Go to a convention that he's at. He goes to a lot of conventions. Buy the books there. Get the autograph. Yeah. Say hi. Super super nice guy. Yep. I've I've always I you know I've heard people say oh Tom Savini was mean to me famously, at a convention. Famously, I, said that, yeah. they say that. Well, I have never had a bad Tom Savini never. experience, so I don't um, know where I met him. I don't know where the these same stories come from. Time, first time I met Doc Santos and the guys is the first time I met Tom Savini at that. Was it Mad Monster? Mad Monster. Mm -hmm. Monster. Never forget that day. It was just an awesome day all around. Wow, yeah, that was. I um yeah I mean you know him and his team made the mask for the uh, black phone movie coming out next year so oh. so oh. They, they they created okay. that so he was you know he's a supervisor now i mean he's basically i don't think he's ever going to use the word i'm not going to say it but <laughs> retired he's not retired. oh no he's not retired. he'll never say no I, but i think he's he's at the point now where he's um first of all he's older than you think because yeah. he, he he's very young looking for his and, age and then good health and, and and apparently in good health and i think you know now he's at the point where he's kind of like dick smith passing on his knowledge to a new generation mm -hmm. of makeup artists and everything which is you know that's the sort of thing that really you know that's a legacy that may not show up on the imdb charts and everything but it guarantees that your work and your vision is going to go on mm -hmm. long after you're gone yeah. And that, the school is the produced, school is amazing. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. Produced many of today's current artists. Yeah. One of our uh, guys that and Bill, you know Matt Patterson. Matt, yeah, Matt Patterson. Matt, um, Matt, Matt goes there. He he's he not only he not only went there, but he I believe was chosen as best of the year or one something that he yeah. was like one of their. Well and, and that no surprise if you saw like what he did with uh, Chris Moore's um, uh, the Backward Creep and yeah. everything. You know the guys brilliant he and, did, uh, he did uh, up a lot of his truck for us and he mm. worked on that head almost the whole entire day and by the end of the day it was amazing what, yeah. he, what he could do and a good so, guy too good yeah, guy yeah great guy so this this film probably wouldn't have wouldn't have got made without dario argento either right oh that's true yeah. good 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 to bring up yes. the music we got to talk about the music uh, yeah and and talk about the versions because when you um you know, and I don't know what my favorite version is because there's too dang many of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and some of them are really good. <laughs> I, I I think my favorite one is actually kind of a Frankenstein version that takes, puts in a lot of the stuff that Argento took out when he did his cut because mm -hmm. I like some of the comedy. He took out almost all the comedy. Yeah, but I do like his soundtrack better. I like the Goblin yeah. more I than. I, yeah, more than extended. some of the library film stuff. Yeah, I think I like the extended version best, but I like the Goblin soundtrack better. Yeah, so you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of comedy, what was going on with the blood pressure machine <laughs> <laughs> scene? I, I laughed my ass off at It's that. funny. That's a funny. It was so hilarious. And it, like many funny things when you're shooting a zombie movie, it was apparently thought up on the spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the middle of I, the zombie carnage, one of these biker guys decides to take his blood pressure. I know that feeling because you know, like we were, we were shooting, we were shooting the movie with Mike Christopher, and and uh, we had we had like we shot a picnic scene before zombies, and the kids are like throwing a ball back and forth, and then someone's like, "Hey, wouldn't it be funny if when they turn to zombies, they're throwing a head back and forth?" You're like that would be funny. Yeah, so we're yeah. just people. The extras are just coming up and suggesting funny gags for their zombie to do. And we said, "Yeah, film it all." Well, and I think that's what happened. I think the guy 
yeah came up with the idea and it's cool to have the the arm ripped off and see the screen change <laughs> go to zero yeah, yeah, whatever. The blood pressure dropping yeah, down as it should down. oh my god i'd never laugh so hard it's a hard science movie checks out life. well the screwdriver in the ear was wasn't planned either and he had to do that like overnight and it's a oh, yeah. and everything it's yeah a that was like effect. a continuity yeah. fix right yeah it's but, such a great effect right it yes, is it was. again a very simple effect. Something thought up at the last minute, and it turned into a, just one of the best gags in the in the. Film. And unfortunately, see now they would just do CGI, and I don't want to. I don't want to be old man yelling at clouds here. CGI has its place, um, but boy, when you can do practical, if there's a practical way to do it, it just looks so much more real on account of it being real. Yeah, you know? tactical. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, low budget films now they can't afford the you know the permit to actually shoot rounds or you know even right. blanks right even blanks um so you know you always get the the special effects the 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 fire out of the right. gun well, muzzle, I, can't, muzzle. I mean mm -hmm. I, Romero said something about ins having insurance but I can't imagine what kind of damage was done to that mall um with driving cars in it yeah. the motorcycles motorcycles I mean, I suppose it's. They must have had a cleanup crew that. Yeah. Well, they. Yeah. The, what does amazing to me is the the hours that they were there to shoot. They would come in at night, and have to be done by six thirty because the mall mm. music would start, and nobody knew how to turn the mall music off. <laughs> even though the, the mall did the mall over ten thirty. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this music's playing, and they couldn't shoot anything because of this music. That's funny. And so they were losing like four hours of. of shooting time every, um, every getting day. four hours to clean up yeah. well yeah and think about it. they just ba they basically didn't have a life during that whole yeah. oh no you, you shot all the hours you could the hours you were off i don't know sleep uh what's well, some this, of them uh, slept there uh, you know hmm. ken forey told stories about him and david and him and uh, scott reiniger riding together back and forth to the hotel right. and that they spent their time trying to come up with new short, tall jokes. You know, ah, <laughs> that's good. Forey was giving him a hard time for being short, and Reininger would shoot it right back about it. It's funny, every time Scott Reininger stepped into the frame, they'd have to shoot it from a low angle to make him look as tall as the other, <laughs> the other guys. Well, there, there was one time they, where they looked pair. almost the same yeah. height, and I was like thinking, how'd they do that? And then as Reininger steps out of, out of uh, screen, it looked like he was, uh, um, like he stepped down or something. Like he probably jumped up on a box when he jumped up there and was talking to him. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, now I, I should know this from watching this movie as many times as I have. But the those two characters, Forey and Reiniger, they they were not friends before this all came together, right? They just sort of fell into right. this. It's mm -hmm. like, come yeah. with us, we're going. And that, that's interesting to me because they clearly have a much better relationship than the other two even though the yeah. other two are boyfriend and girlfriend and about to be parents and everything it's it, you feel i always felt like with those characters it's not that they didn't like each other and everything but i i just don't feel like they would have stayed together if it hadn't been for the fact that the zombies took over and they ended up stuck in a mall yeah. it, 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 there's not whereas the other two guys they're clearly bros they're gonna they're yeah. buddies they got common interests and they're making the best of this you know they just they just found their their best friend right Quick, quick comment him. about Richard France, which who was the scientist with the eye patch. Mm -hmm. We've already talked about him from Crazies. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I didn't realize this, but in an interview on the on the Blu-rays, he was he played a zombie in night. Hmm. Uncredited. Ah. Uh he was one of the guys chewing on a chewing on the bone and his character was kind of fun when that when they cut to him like as things are completely falling apart and he's out there like you know kind of insinuating we may have to feed them to calm them down or you know he's he's throwing stuff out there and everyone's just totally rejecting it and yeah, yeah. you know you start seeing you, either that's kind of like a clue of where day went well by the time by the time dawn was shot i think he said he was uh teaching at a college in wisconsin and so Romero called him up and yeah. had him come back. And then at some point he told Romero, you know, I'm basically the same guy that was in crazies, only he died. Hmm. And Romero's like, you're right. 
put an iPad. Get him an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that's how I got the iPad. Hello. His delivery is very theatrical. I mean, yeah, yeah. Maybe too theatrical, but it, it kind of like okay, so, so he's kind of lost his mind. But who wouldn't? Yeah. You know, it, yeah, it's a stressful well, situation. That's the impression I got that he was just so tired of well, explaining this to everybody. Mm. It, yeah. It's funny how everybody in this movie, like how much they seem to love Romero, and he talks about Richard France how he absolutely hated uh, teaching and that <laughs> coming oh. coming back and doing this thing for Romero for Dawn of the Dead got him into voiceover work. Oh, oh nice. Oh, okay. He, he did have a pretty good voice. Yeah. yeah. Also, there's, um, if you pay close attention, the guy that played Rhodes in Day was playing a cop in this one. Yeah. Mm. yeah right. Just a quick... And there's like some fan theories out there that says that that was really Rhodes. Ah, oh. Joe Pilato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Pilato. Yeah, ended up in Day as as. Uh, sorry. Oh, that's probably why he was so high strung. Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we could we could literally could talk about this oh. for hours and hours. Oh, and hours yeah, and sure. Time is running out. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the great things about it is that it, a year later we get a sequel to it, unofficial here, but official in Italy, called Zombie. Yeah, and mm. uh, yeah, which is its own its thing. own thing, but right. it's equally awesome. Yeah, and, shark uh, fight with a zombie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the eyeball scene. The eyeball scene is. Uh, oh man, Fulci, Fulci, you you sick man. Yeah, All yeah. Right. I should, um, yeah, if you like that, you know, you can go back to the old decades of horror of the seventies. Yeah, we covered yeah, we it. That. We uh, did that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had to. All right, uh, let's uh, let's quickly wrap this up because we have some feedback we all want to get to. Uh, don't want to pass that up on this episode, and we we have six minutes, so okay, keep that in mind. Yeah, okay, <laughs> Chad, you're up next. If you haven't, I can't imagine anybody not have not seen this movie that's a horror fan. But yeah, it's one of my favorites, and will always be. Like I said earlier, it's, I'll always own a copy of this in some form. So okay. yeah, it's good. It's a good movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a good movie. <laughs> ten out of ten brains, uh, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. This is one of those ones that I didn't get all the subtext or sub context of society and everything. Plus the fact that the resonance it has now is really surprising. Over forty days later, it's really if you haven't watched right, it right. for a while, you need to you need to watch it again. And what better time to do it than the Halloween? Uh, Halloween. Yes. All right, Bill. It's a great film. Come on. They've released uh, about 20 different versions of this on DVD. And like idiots, every time they do, we run out and buy it. There's a reason for that. It's it's essential. It's a classic. Yeah. So please go see it. Yep, definitely. And I don't have much more to add other than that. It is, it is one of those films that really had me frightened to see it. I was really yeah. scared to watch this movie because of all the shenanigans of its release and, and you know, <laughs> the balls that had to come out unrated, um, mm -hmm. you know, it hasn't been matched often or at least not as effectively. So interesting thing, interesting movie. If you yeah. haven't seen it, you should, if you have, you should watch it again. Yeah. yeah. Watch it again. What the heck? All right. Uh, Jeff, sir, I believe you have some feedback for us. We do. We do have some feedback. Uh, and I'm going to do these in reverse order of the way they're on the, on the uh, notes so because the oldest one is uh episode 140 the haunting of julia oh wow faith says love the soundtrack too double exclamation point so i think we must have talked about the soundtrack is what i'm oh. <laughs> uh i can't remember 10 episodes ago but uh, <laughs> no. i do i did like the movie and i think was daphne on that with us i think she was Yep. She was. I, I was not on that episode. Oh, okay. So she okay. filled in for me. So yeah. probably, yeah, we probably did. Um, thank you, Faith. And then a couple for episode 147, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Jason Juno says James Gregory, Victor Bono, and Kim Hunter were all in Night Gallery. <gasps> wow. It's seventies, this kind of night gallery and, and Kolchak yeah. is kind of like have we, have we done, for the, have for we the done classic night gallery. Era. We have it. That would be a tricky one to do because yeah. there's so many episodes. But that would movie, be that would be a. We could do the oh movie. Night Gallery the movie. We, oh, we should do the movie because that's yeah. early Spielberg. Add some guts yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, we'll put, put that, that on, on the put that on the short list. 
And then uh, Kevin Capel says, first two Apes movies, only ones worth watching. Should have stopped making them. The story was over. Go watch Escape again. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, me, tell me that movie is I, I think Doc replied, but I'll keep watching them as long as they keep me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, uh, but no, I think Escape just is... I love that one. We're going to have to do that one, too. By the way. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, a few on uh, 148, The Blood on Satan's Claw. Ah. Uh, first one from Jay Bart. The Hammer team could never be matched. This is a decent film, nevertheless. <laughs> yeah. True. I, I, like he, that. I like what he, he tells thought. no lies. There, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, and then from Tanya Taylor. This was the first horror movie I saw as a child. For all its flaws, it taught me Ooh. about atmosphere and started my obsession with British horror. As a funny side note, mm -hmm. when the discussion turned to the horrible face of Satan, I remembered as a child, I thought that Angel's eyebrows was the skin that was going to provide the face. And when everyone saw his face, they would just blow. Oh, interesting. Oh. I like her oh. ending better. Yeah, I did yeah. Too. they should they should have put you on the script team. Yeah. <laughs> I like the exploding part. Yeah. Oh well, a kid can dream. Thank you once again for a wonderful episode, and thank you, Tanya. Thanks, Tanya. Yeah, uh, thanks, Tanya. Uh, appreciate mm -hmm. that. And then from Evil, Evil, Evil. So if she weighs the same as a duck, that means she's made of wood, and therefore a witch. <laughs> <laughs> also, the science checks out. Yep, logic. Uh, can't beat that logic. Also, oh, to add, the title yeah. design of Blood on Satan's Claw reminds me of the Dark Crystal with that sharp font. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, thanks to uh, Evil Tanya and Jaybar and Jason and Kevin and Faith. Yeah. Really thanks appreciate a lot. it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, folks. And we we love, love feedback. Yes, we, we love do. your feedback. Leave some down below or on the site, and yeah, or email even. We love it. Uh, Jeff, while you're there, do you have the next episode handy? What are we doing? And to we are. It? This one's chosen by Chad. <gasps> Chad. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hmm, if I remember correctly, I think it's Exorcist Two: The Heretic. Oh my. Correcto mundo. Oh my. Chad, Chad, what have we done to make you treat us with such disrespect? Um, I don't know. I just love seeing you squirm. Uh, <laughs> we are, uh, yeah, I, oh gosh, this, <laughs> I have seen this movie, but only once. So this hey, this is one of my favorite directors, but great director, awesome. John, director. John Borman, right? Yeah. yeah. John Borman. When he's good, he's very, very good. When he's bad, okay. it's Zardoz and this. Zardoz. <laughs> so, well, I got to throw something out too. Uh, you guys. Recognize the name Jano Swark? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Superman. Well, you were... Superman oh, or Supergirl. Was Jaws, it? 2. Or... Jaws, Jaws 2. Jaws, Jaws 2. Jaws 2, yeah. My wife is binging Grey's Anatomy now, and I saw his oh, name no. as a director on Grey's Anatomy. Oh, oh wow. nice. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. Mom, he's, I'm glad he's still cashing a paycheck. Yeah. Didn't expect yeah. that. All right, I cool. just thought of these weird callbacks. And then I tell my wife, and she goes, eh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's not impressed. Yeah. All right. Well, we we need to get out of here. Chad, Bill, Jeff, thank you for joining me. This was so much fun. Thank oh, you yeah. guys, and happy 150. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Many absolutely. more to come. Yes. And thanks All for the right. votes. It was a yes. close one. It was. It was. We'll have to do the others at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, they're 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 hanging out there for you know something special. Consolation uh, prize. Let's say good night. Good night, everybody. Night, everybody. <laughs>